So welcome everybody. Welcome to a new human experience podcast. And today is July the 22nd, 2021. The topic for this evening is called fields of energy. So um, why do I call this, this fields of energy is um, the, the whole of July, it's talking about different tools that's going to assist you. And we talked about um, the energy, the, the chakra system and how to recognize when one of your chakras is um, out of balance and also how to balance it as well. And so this week, the the emphasis was on um, fields of energy as in morphic fields. So my journey with coming up with this topic was that a, I would say maybe about five, six years ago, I saw um, Les Miserables. I don't mean the movie. I mean, actually went to um, the theater and um, attended the musical in, in so so and I really love that I really love the the, the music of Les Miserables and and so when I saw the movie I really well the singing is not as good but then the the, the acting made kind of made up a little bit for it and one of the songs in particular is called um, Empty Chairs and Empty Tables that's one of the one of the songs there. It's about the the only survivor of an ill-fated uprising. And uh, he went back to the place where he used to hang out with all his friends who, who were talking about how to um, rebel against the system, how to make the system more... Um, uh, just more justice um, oriented and all that. And when he went back to the place, because he's the only one that survived, all, everybody else died. So he felt this profound loss um, of his friends and he was seeing the vision of his friends gathering in this place, being overlaid on top of seeing the the empty chairs and the empty tables so and the the lyrics of the 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 of the song was just so moving that every time i listened to the song i just um kind of really i really got into the the the, the mood and so a couple of maybe about a week ago i was listening to this song um and I, all of a sudden, I just started crying. I just started crying. And it was really inconsolable crying, but it only lasted for maybe about you know, five minutes or so. And then after that, it was like, okay, I was done. <laughs> and that was that. So afterwards, I was really intrigued. How come, you know, I like, yes, I love the song and I know this is a sad song. It's a tearjerker and all that. And I've actually at times listened to the song without, you know, crying my eyes out in, sol in so inconsolably. So how come um, all of a sudden I just had this experience? So I was doing an, an analysis afterwards because I was really intrigued. What did I tap into? So I was really looking at this and that's when I started to pay more attention to the morphic fields because um, what do I mean by morphic fields is that it's, it's really when emotions have energies and um, thought, our thoughts have energy. So the if you look at the, the the morphic field of this whole musical the Les Miserables it's about a um you know it's it's really about 
injustice is really about going against fighting against systemic injustice and also there's the theme of the 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 loneliness because you're fighting against uh, a system that is rather um, brutal and not very not very humane and then also about survival and um and also about feeling guilty of being able to survive loss of loved ones so so all of these are themes of the the Les Miserables um, musical and if I zoom out to look at it. It actually maps out a lot to what we are going through in in the in the world at large right now. We are actually um, a lot of us are becoming more aware of the injustice of the system because before, whereas before, we were we weren't quite as aware, but now it's it's becoming we're more aware of it. And then because we've been kind of, um, well, some more than others being uh, shut in because of this, this period of time. And also um, in the last maybe 16, 18 months, we might have lost some people that we've loved, or at the very least, we, we weren't able to be in touch with them. It's only, I think maybe about most recently, that we started to kind of come back out from this this um, hibernation. So it's actually all of these these ideas have already big morphic fields because there's been um, a lot of people that's been fighting against injustice throughout the 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 centuries. And so each time there is one of this fighting against in injustice, it adds to that morphic field. And now we are coming to the point where um, we, we're starting to break the system. The system is breaking. It's like this long drawn, drawn out journey. We are kind of um, nearing the end of it. And that's when the 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 this more field is actually very activated and saturated at the moment so that's really what i was tapping into and and so when i looked at all of this is i become more much more sensitive to morphic fields and that's why i wanted to talk about it because i i really had a very um visceral experience of being immersed in these morphic fields. We are always being immersed in the morphic fields or all different morphic fields. It's just that some morphic fields are, are more active than others. And some of the active, the, the, the morphic fields um, could be, let's say, um, being a woman, let's say. So right now, being a woman is, um, I, it's for, for me personally, it's not very active, but maybe for some people, it's very active. For me right now, one of the morphic fields that I belong to is being Chinese. And yes, the this Chinese morphic field is kind of active because of, you know, how the, uh, the virus first um, got released. So, so these are all the, the morphic fields that we swim in, but most of the time we're not consciously aware of them. And I want to bring out the, um, to really highlight what morphic fields are, because if we don't know, if we don't consciously know these things, then we are actually at the mercy of them rather than being the master of them. 
And because this month is really about giving tools. And so this is actually one of the tool is the great tool that um, we can all tap into and use and master. So a um, couple of things I want to, to point out is that more so now than ever before that we are in charge of our own um, destiny. I should, I should say that is destiny. It, it may not be obvious to some people, but if you don't know, I just want to let you know that now you actually have a lot of say in what happen or does not happen in your world. I just actually, maybe um, 10 minutes ago, listened to what Jason Estes was talking about, the voting system. He, he was saying that it used to be that the, the people that are more conscious um, used to be, meaning maybe about like 10, 20 years ago, people that are more conscious. Um, for example, you know, somebody like the Dalai Lama or, or those people that are the more tapped in and really have seen the a lot more of the, the the workings behind they are more conscious their consciousness is at a higher level so they get um a higher they um they their vote let's say if they say they want um, world peace then their vote is more um it counts more than the others. Let's say if I, 10, 20 years ago, I, I, I say, okay, I want world peace. My vote is maybe worth one vote. Whereas somebody like Dalai Lama, their consciousness is higher. So their vote is worth, I'm not sure how many times, but maybe 10 times more. So their vote is, is can be counted as 10 person. So let's say if someone else um, next to me is saying that, oh, okay, I don't like um, Russia, for example, and and so they they vote for you know going to war with with Russia, whereas someone else with a higher consciousness really know what um, what's was actually going on, and and they vote against going to war with Russia, then then the, the ones with a higher consciousness will count more. Whereas what Jason is saying now is that now, because at this point, humanity is really learning to be responsible for our own actions and to take back our own power. So right now, it does not matter what your consciousness is. So Dalai Lama has one vote and I have one vote. So that means it actually teaches and, and also allow us, give us that opportunity to each one be responsible to get to the point to really um, work on clearing our own um, mess up, to get to the point where I can be responsible and vote because knowing that my one vote is going to count just as much as any other. It, that's the, the way that we can learn responsibility, being responsible for ourselves. So, so right now we are all being given more responsibility for ourselves and for our environment. And that is why um, something like the morphic field can be useful because morphic field can be, um, can give us more power. So let me give you an example. <clears throat> Let's say I want to, I want to, 
feel more empowered, for example. I want to feel more em empowered. So how do I, how would I be able to make use of morphic field? So if I want to be more empowered, then all I need to do is think of people that in my mind are empowered people. For example, let's say if I like, um, if I think that um, Superman is a very empowered person, then what I can do is tap into the morphic field of Superman. Like now I know that you, you you may think, well, Superman is not real, but it is real. Superman is real because Superman has been around and in our consciousness for such a long time. If I tell someone, oh, okay, you're Superman, they would know what it is that I mean. So it does not matter whether um, that person that I am referring to is real or not real because the morphic field, the idea is there. So every time when I want to feel more empowered, what I can do is just tap into Superman. Or if let's say instead of Superman, I resonated with um, Archangel Michael. So if I want to feel more empowered, all I have to do is call on Archangel Michael. And Archangel Michael is another big morphic field because um, most people that are in the um, more religious, they would have heard of Archangel Michael. It's not, um, it's not something that is like obscure that you know, only 10 people in the world knows. Most people, even if they're not religious, they would have somehow been exposed to that idea of Archangel Michael. And they would have some idea that Archangel Michael is really a, a warrior archetype. So that's, that's an empowerment, if, I, if that's what I resonate with. And for example, if I want to feel more empowered as a woman, I can call on the archetype of Wonder Woman. Or I can um, tap on, okay, let's see what other woman that is more empowered. Let's say Oprah Winfrey. So some people really resonate with who Oprah, Oprah is. And so for them, and, and she can work as the archetype or the morphic field for an empowered woman. So this is what I mean by making use of morphic field is that we think of those iconic people, those icons, that, that idea, and we can start to tap into that morphic field because behind that, there's a lot of people who admire who Oprah is. There's a lot of people who know who Archangel Michael is. So there is this energy field that is full of the, um, what Archangel Michael or what Oprah stands for. So that is something that we can, we can call on. How do we, how do we use it? Is, um, I think the easiest is to use it in meditation. So in meditation, if you want to tap into more empowerment than before you, you know, so before you go into um, meditation is to call on Archangel Michael, call on Superman, call on Batman, call on Aquaman, call on Wonder Woman, call on, you know, the, the whole um, Justice League, uh, or, or whatever it is, all of those morphic fields that you want to tap into. And once you've called on all of those, you have tapped into their power, then you bring those power within you in your meditation. And you would be able to surround yourself with that, with a combination of those morphic fields and be able to start to integrate that into your 
own neurology. So you would know what, um, what it feels like, for example, in your body to feel like that you um, have the abilities of Superman, have the abilities of Archangel Michael, and all of those. That's something that we can use. And I just want to give another example of how to use morphic fields. For example, if you, let's say you're a healer and you are going and you want to um, help one of your client, and then you can actually call on Archangel Raphael because Archangel Raphael is known more of as a, the angel, Archangel for healers. And you can also call on um, any doctor that you have a lot of um, experience with and you, and you have a lot of respect for. So it can be somebody that is still alive or it could be somebody that is, let's say, um, a fictitious person. Um, I remember a long time, maybe about at least 10 years now, as a TV series called Dr. House. His house is a very obnoxious person, but he's a brilliant doctor and he, he, like, he always can find the, the underlying issue of that, of that patient, of his patient. So if you are a healer, you may want to tap into that morphic field of being able to diagnose what's wrong with somebody. And um, some of the other healers that you can tap into is Jesus. Jesus is a great healer because he can even bring people from the dead. So he would be somebody that would be great to, to bring in if you're a healer. And, um, and also let's say Sifu James because Sifu James is pretty good at um, healing up people and being able to see energy and find out what's gone wrong in your body and things that you can use you can tap into is um, it does not have to be a person it can be a substance as well for example gcmaf is a an amino i think it's an amino acids acid that our body can manufacture and it is the, and it's very effective in boosting our immune system. So GCMAF, because it is, it is something that um, scientifically is known and it's something that doctors are already using to, to um, boost our immune system. So GCMAF, that particular amino acid is has its own has a um, morphic field as well you can so that's another way that you can tap into it and you can tap into it just by just calling that so whenever you feel like you you your immune system is a little weak then all you have to do is just call on gcmf so you just you just tap into it, GCMAF, and just, you know, tap it into your thyroid, for example, or your thymus gland to, to kind of um, activate your own immune system. So these are all different ways of tapping into the morphic field. And um, if you, if you think of it, pretty much there's a whole lot of, there's a lot of things that has morphic field. And as long as there is a morphic field, you can tap into it and use that length, that energy. So this is, it's, it's really a very um, flexible and also a very powerful tool that you can use. some of the um, things that you, I would suggest you be more selective about using morphic field is to really choose something that you have a, 
a direct experience with. For example, um, if you have never seen a if you have never seen a movie, a Superman movie, or, or you've never read a, a Superman um, comic book, then like your exposure to Superman is is very limited. Then I would suggest you you know choose something else that actually you have more of a um, a direct experience with. And um, so that's one of the things because there are so many morphic fields that you can tap into. So the, um, when you first start out experimenting in how to use morphic fields, how to use tapping into morphic fields in order to make use of the energy that's already out there that is that you can make use of is to choose and select the one that you have a direct experience with. And after a while, when you feel comfortable and, and, and really um, how to use, tap into this morphic field, you, it's, then you can actually go into tapping into some morphic fields that you are not as familiar with. But to begin with, really select the ones that you are familiar with. That will be one of the um, tips that I can um, give you. And also select according to what you need. So what do I mean by that? So meaning that if you are um, if you're a healer and you want healing advice, then don't bring in Batman because Batman knows very little about healing. So, so that's what I mean by select according to what you need. So if you, if you need somebody who um, is, let's say, if you want healing advice, then look for people, ideas, um, does not have to be actual people, even made up um, figures as well. As long as there is a, as long as that actual or fictional figure is known to be good in the field of what it is that you need, then those are the ones to select. And then the other thing I, I think I've probably already mentioned is that you can actually stack your morphic fields. So what do I mean by stack? So if you want um, warrior archetypes, then you can pick Archangel Michael and you can add Superman to it. You can add Wonder Woman to it. You can add Thor, for example. It's like all of these are different archetypes types different that has a big morphic field that people know about and they all represent um, very unambiguously represent this archetype of warrior and like empowered superpower people so stacking is you don't just call on Archangel Michael call on um, Archangel Michael superwoman I mean, super, Superman and all those. So you stack these things. You, you stack your morphic fields because the more you stack them, <clears throat> the, the more energy you have access to. So that's what I mean by stacking them. Um, and, and so, and also I just want to repeat some of the... Um, the principles that I've been talking since since the, the first episode <clears throat> in in July is th there are two principles so far. The first principle is that everything is energy, and really um, live that. Really live that, and really allow yourself to experience that everything is energy. Your body is energy. 
your thought has the energy. And um, so everything is energy. And principle number two is that energy goes where your attention goes. So whatever it is that you focus on, that is where energy is going to go. And these two principles is really the underlying of how to use morphic fields. Because if you look at it, is that morphic fields is just energy fields. There is no solid morphic fields. Morphic fields is not something that I can take a picture of and show it to you. However, if you walk into a room of, that has a certain morphic field, you will feel it. It's just like if um, I remember maybe about uh, last year when I was walking on the street, I can literally feel fear because that was when you know, we first um, all of a sudden have this encounter with a virus that supposedly in some people's minds, supposedly they've been um, indoctrinated to, to think that it is fatal. If you get it, then you know it's not going to be good for you. So when I was walking on the street, I can literally feel that fear. It's not coming from me, but I know that I'm walking into this, this um, morphic field that has a certain quality. And, and so that, so morphic field, you cannot see it, but you can feel it. So that is energy. So, so that really is my experience that everything is energy because all this thought, like fear is just a thought. Fear is, but it has an impact on your nervous system. It makes you feel something in your body. So that's what energy can do. And also the more you, your mind zoom in on the fear, the more you can feel that. And when you actually relax and your mind is not even on it, then um, you don't feel it. Even if everyone else around you can feel it, you can tap into it and, and sample it, but you can pull out. Just like when I was um, bawling my eyes out, just listening to, to the song, Empty Chairs and Empty Table. I was able to tap into the energy and cry, but you know, in five minutes, I think it took about all five minutes, I was able to be over it and completely recovered because I have done some work on releasing my, my own affinity with sadness. And had I not done those work, then maybe it's harder for me to, to, to um, zoom out from that morphic field. So then that's really what attention, energy goes where your attention is about. So when you intentionally bring in these morphic fields to assist you in your daily lives, so it could be in your meditation, or it could be if you have a particular issue that you can resolve or you don't even know where to start, then what you can do is actually bring in helpers. And what helpers you can, it, it like, there are so many helpers. You can literally just, you know, um, Google and see what morphic field you can tap into. All you have to do is find someone or something that represents that um, idea that you want to tap into that has, and as long as that idea has enough people agreeing that this, for example, um, if enough people agreeing that Archangel Michael is a warrior, then Archangel Michael has that morphic field that you can make use of. So that 
really opens up and give you a whole lot more energy that you can use. And that's what I want to, to um, talk about and bring in for all of you to make use of and play with this idea of um, play with this idea of empowering yourself. And I actually want to show you. Um, so this is a representation of all the different morphic fields that we are in. I actually want to show you something else. This is um, so this is kind of a, a, a graphic idea that we in the universe that we live in on earth and everywhere that there are it's we are all bombarded by different energies, different morphic fields and all these particular shapes is actually just representing layers and layers of energy and and that's what our body is being bombarded with and we're swimming in each and every second and we most of the time we're not aware of it and when you are more consciously aware of it you can actually start to make use of these and not just be at the effect of them you can actually start to go and um, be the master of it why because the the reason why we um, advertisement works so well is that advertisement all of these is actually they understand that when you are being um, when you see certain ideas being offered to you day in day out if only the advertisement is is only for let's say 30 seconds but 30 seconds every day it imprints this idea so even if you don't if you're non um, smoker if you are constantly being um, bombarded by you know really good looking men or women smoking then like subliminally these are the ideas these are the morphic fields that advertisement the advertising agency they they get paid big money to create these morphic fields to create this idea that you know only cool people smoke so if you want to be cool then you should smoke or you should drink this brand of you know wine so these are actually the more um, these are also making use of of creating and they're actually generating the morphic field. However, once the morphic field has been generated, we can, if we understand how a morphic field works, we can start to master it and use it for our own purpose. And also the reason why um, Sifu James have so many in a teacher's class, like he, he does not need to, you know, he does not really need the money. He does not need to, to do that. But he is teaching the class because he wants to create this morphic field. Why is Franco giving all of those advancing consciousness talks? He is creating a morphic field of advancing consciousness so he is actually making use of that and when you understand what morphic field is you can create your own morphic field you don't have to um like beyond using other people's morphic field and mastering how to take advantage of them you can actually start to create a morphic field of whatever it is that you wish to create so that's the power of morphic field is to take an idea or even a stack of idea 
and use the energy that's already behind those ideas. And when you get to be at the creator level, you can start to completely take a new idea that very few people has um, tapped into yet, but something that you res really resonate with you. And you start to talk about that idea. You start to write about that idea. You start to um, put a podcast out, for example, about that idea and you talk about it. Because for me, a new human experience, that's what I really want. So that's why I'm putting out my energy to create this morphic field of a new human experience that's completely different from what the um, old idea of what being human is. So I'm creating my own new morphic field that when other people they resonate with it, they can start to now tap into this morphic field as well. And that's the technology of morphic field. And when you start to know this, then it empowers you to be able to create anything you want. And that's what I mean, um, that's what I want to talk about. Morphic fields, fields of energy is Energy is something that is real, it's everything, and you can make use of it, you can master it. You can use what is existing and you can create something that's absolutely new for yourself. And that's what I want to explore this evening. 